Praise the Lord said you can't continue talking about the seed until you talk about this. You can't continue to talk about um, what they're going to have until you deal with unbelief in their heart. Because a lot of times, you've been um, put up in a system of this world. And that's funny, you talk about the wheat and the, the, wheat and the tears. That, that a lot of us cannot get something from God because we don't believe God. Okay, you can try to be religious. At some point, you want to believe, but in my deepness of my heart, I'm not sure God is going to do for me what he says. Okay. I ain't trying to talk religion today. I don't do religion. But there's a lot of us who doubt God's word. Do we have a validity to what he says? Do, is he going to do this thing? So my purpose of teaching today is to uproot unbelief out of your heart. Amen. Because until you do that, right, it doesn't matter what I say. Right. It won't happen. Yeah, yeah. Right. Until we uproot unbelief in, in that system, because the truth about it, the world, you know what the world call unbelief? Negativity. Right. Uh. Okay. The world call unbelief negativity because right. a negative person really don't believe anything. Right, right. <coughs> you can tell them something, so they, it's a form of so, sarcasm to masquerade what you're saying it real. Right. So I'm negative about it. Ain't gonna never happen. That's negativity. Mm -hmm. You know? You tell somebody, well, I believe it when I see it. That's right. negativity. Right. <laughs> well, when I see it, I believe it. That's negativity. That's unbelief. And we are moving in the, the church, move in the spirit of unbelief, because if we believe what God said, we will see miracles. Right. If we believe what God says, because See, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that men should not live by bread alone by every word that proceed after the mouth of God. So let me tell you this. Then if that is true, then why is not 100% believers taking the Bible and spending time with it? If it's, if, it's a, if it's something I should live by, what is live by? I run my family, my children, how I think, how I walk, uh, my business, and everything I do by that word then why is it when I have a problem, I go somewhere else to solve it instead of the word? Right, right. Why is it that I don't use the word to deal with a, a marriage problem, my children issues, my business issues, uh, uh, you know, thing, and how I treat my neighbors, right. and how I treat my loved one? Why is it that we don't use it if we believe it? Right. Because I believe I say this, that anything a person won't do, they don't believe. I don't care what you say about it. You will not do something you don't believe. Right. See, most people have a problem with tithing because you don't believe in it. The world don't believe in it. They don't believe why they should give to God because God's not important to them. You understand what I'm saying to you? So now, when you look at the word unbelief, it talks about absence of faith. So what is unbelief? The absence of the word. If faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God, so unbelief is a lack of hearing the word of God concerning that matter so that you don't have faith yes. on it yes. so it can happen in your life. Yes. That is why until you get fully faith on the subject, if you want to get healed, that's what they say, you got to take every word of healing that's right. that the Bible said, or that one word, he right. took away all my iniquities yes. and all my infirmities, uh, uh, by his stripe I'm healed. You can't say that one time because inside your heart you don't believe it. You believe the pill gets you healed. Right. That's why you take it. That's right. Okay. That's right. If you don't believe the pill will get you healed, you'll never take it. Right. <laughs> so the reason you won't quote that scripture because you don't believe it will heal you. Wow, wow that's good. Nobody me. That's good. You don't believe it heal you. Because if you believe it, see, the reason you won't say my God shall supply all my needs according to riches and glory, you don't believe it. Right. Yes, I do. Then why don't you say it? Right. Then why you have that? Right. Now you can say something, but you can be a parrot. Oh no, that's 
good. Why? A parrot don't believe. He just repeats. We got a lot of parrots in church. There's a lot of parrots. Because how do I know that you believe something? Because when you believe something, it affects your behavior. Right. It affects your behavior. It affects how you talk. It affects. Now, how do you know God saved? How do you know God saved? Anybody can come here and say, I'm saved. I know the Lord. Jesus is Lord and Savior in my life. How do you know he's saved? Well, we know how he's saved, not because he says it. We watch his behavior after he says it to know that there's certain things that people who say they believe in the Lord, there's a change of behavior that goes after that. Just like there's a behavior for God. Okay, any woman who married, you expect your husband to have a behavior because he said he married. Right. He, he, right. Right. He can't have an extra move he married to you. Come on now. You gotta let the boo go and you gotta be with me. That's the behavior, right? So there's change of behavior. Well, just like the so when you take on the word and put the word in your heart, it changes your behavior. Oh God. It changes your mentality. It changes how you see things because now. Look, 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 just look at this. The word will change you before it changes the situation. Okay. What is the first thing the word going to do when it changes you? Your perception. It changes your perception, how you see it, how you think about it. Okay. If you look at the situation, it looks hopeless. But when I take on the word of God and put it in my heart, the thing that used to be hopeless is I say God is able. Oh, glory. Right. Right. Nothing shall be impossible right. to those who watch. See, that's what Jesus said. Nothing shall be impossible to those who believe. So now the church got to deal with a believing heart. Yes. Oh, God, have mercy. Okay. Pe people who believe the word are willing to die for it. Yes, right. Okay. Wow. Amen. That's true. Okay. The, the first Corinthians said that, you know, you have not resisted sin unto death. Mm -hmm. There's some things when you believe for, I'm willing to die for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why in in the Christian church, guys like like Paul, who didn't believe the word of God, who sacrificed Christian, killed Christian. But when the word came to him and the road of Damascus, mm. oh, nobody came. Oh, come on. The word of God met him on the road to Damascus. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, he came to take the veil off. Because when the word met him, he found that he was in Saul. Right. But I'm Paul. Right. 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 When the word, you see, when the word met Saul, it changed him. Yes. Oh, nobody hear me. Mm -hmm. The word changed him from Saul of Tarsus to Paul. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody hear me. Yes. And, and when he met the word, I found out to the Christian church teaching that Paul was part of the Pharisees. So that means that he is Conversion happened four years after Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he must have seen Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Could have been part of the crowd yeah. that said crucify yes. him. Right. 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 So he's seen Jesus in the flesh. But that's why in the scripture he said you shall no longer know Jesus after the flesh. Yes. But after the spirit. Yes. Jesus said my words. Spirit. Spirits. And they are like, and that's why he was able to put his life on the line Amen. for the sake of Jesus. When the word began to change you, you believe, when you begin to do the unbelief in your heart, you're willing to suffer for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. You're not willing to suffer for anything if you don't believe that something great is ahead. Right. 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 You're willing to deny yourself from this life because I believe 
that something better is coming. Yes. <coughs> something greater is coming. So this is what faith was back in those days. That's why uh, Jesus said it, right? He said, when the Lord comes back, should we find faith? The devil is after your faith. And if he's after the faith, he's after the word of God. Because without the word of God, there's no faith. So he's attacking the word of God. <coughs> There's a lot of people who come to church on Sundays. They don't believe God. They come to church on Thursdays to Bible studies and all kind of things, but they don't believe Jesus is able. Oh, nobody hear me. They don't believe that God is able to do the things that he's willing to do. We call suffering a different thing than what Christ called it. But the suffering of the believer is something that was deep that caused death and they were willing to die for the word. Are you willing to let somebody talk about you for the word? Are you willing for them to cut your eye? Because in the church today, the minute somebody cut their eye and they act funny, you want to leave. That means you have faith in the word. You're not here for people. you here where I can hear the word of God. Because, see, the thing about the enemy, anywhere the word is spoken, he don't want you there. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, he, he lets you go down the street with the church where they're jumping and make you feel good. They're singing a nice song. That's nice. But don't hear the word of God. They even let you go to the church, the prophetic church, <coughs> and, and, and let you hear all kind of prophecies and feel good and what God will do and what God won't do. Hear prophecies, but prophecies don't change you. Right. The, word does, right? the word does. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a prophet. No, no, I want to get it right. I want to get it right. But but even I know that if I don't speak the word, see me prophesying may it get you to follow me. But it, now people are very shady. Yeah. After a while you prophesy, you think I'm God and you're going to follow me and doing everything else because of a man. Yes. But guess what? It's going to take faith. See, it take no faith to follow me, but it's going to take a lot of faith to follow Jesus. Yes. So you need the word of God to follow Jesus. Amen. Because you have to understand, we have a, 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 this generation where somebody used it this morning, itch your ears. Go and go hear the next preacher who's going to say what they need to say. The more excitement. But the word of God is the only thing that requires transformation. Yes. It requires transformation. It requires change. It requires change from the pulpit on down. Nobody hear me. So now, there's two words for the absence of faith. Right? It is the word apatheia in the Hebrew. Yes. Apathia, and that word is translated as disobedience. Oh, God have mercy. It is translated as disobedience. So anytime there's lack of faith, of absence of faith, there's unbelief, there's disobedience somewhere. Yeah. What's disobedience? You won't listen to what's been said. When a child, you tell a child to do something, that child don't do it. What do you call that child? Disobedience. So guess what? That's what lack of faith is. They don't believe what you're saying. When you don't believe what the word of God is saying, you can try to masquerade it, right? You can masquerade. The Bible says to behave a certain way, right? Right? Yes. It's, it's tell you how to live, yes. <clears throat> about fornication, about adultery, about anger, about hatred, about bitterness, about all these other things, right? When you get angry, when you hate people, when you backbite it, when you gossiping in churches, they only talk about two things, adultery and fornication. Right. But those things are behavior that the word can change. That's right. The word can change that. Right. But the greatest thing that's part of the change is our heart of unforgiveness. Right. 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 It's our heart of bitterness, our heart of... That's hateful. Those are equally sin as anything else. So if God tells you to love and you're not loving, guess what it's called? Disobedience. That's all it is. And that also goes along with what? Unbelief. Okay. Um, the next word for the word unbelief is apostia. Apostia. A-P-I-S-T-I-A. 
which is a word that says distrust. So when God tells you to do something, you don't believe it, guess what happened? You don't, you, you distrust him, you don't trust him. It's the opposite of trust, it's distrust. You don't trust the Lord, right? Now, if we don't believe God, I've been talking about seed, and I've been talking about harvest. I don't know how many people really believe. But the Lord telling me, you need to talk about this so we can get our faith right. Amen. So if there's any unbelief in our hearts, we need to uproot it. We need to get it out so we can be able to receive. If your neighbor is sleeping, wake him up. Devil trying to put him to sleep. Get up. But guess what happened? You know why? Because today you need to get that thing out of you so you can have. Amen. This is we we reaching a season of jubilee. Amen. Amen. See, according to the Jewish calendar, you are in the fifth year of jubilee. And I'm telling you guys this, right? The year of ju jubilee is when you debts are being canceled, right? Debts are canceled. It's a time of deliverance. Whatever holds you got to let you go. Okay, the Bible said that if you had a slave, you had to let that slave go. Let me tell you something. This is the year. If the devil have you, he got to let you go. Whatever way, if he got you mentally, physically, spiritually, sexually, emotionally, on a hooked up, whatever way he got that, he got to let you go. And that is why the enemy don't ever want you to hear the word. Because guess what? You see, the word, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, they heard the word, but then they mix it with faith. Now, now, what does that mean? Right? When the word come, right, you got to believe it. It's a different thing from just unbelief. See, when the word comes, there's something you got to do. I'm going to show you today. When, the, when you hear the word, there's something you got to do for it to come to pass in your life. When the word comes, you cannot just be a, a, a person in church. We taught people how to hear, but we never taught them how to listen. That's good. Because that, you see, the devil knows that. That's why in most black churches, that we have a lot of hooping, a whole lot of things. People get excited, but you didn't really hear nothing. You didn't really hear nothing. You got excited. You've been entertained. Oh, you knock the chairs, you do everything else. But did you learn something that when you leave here, you know how to live? Did, did you learn something on how to get out of your situation right. when you're home, when the pastor's not here, and when the music, when the choir is not here, when, when the evangelist and the minister is not here? Do you know how to get results when you go home? Amen. That's the key. You ask people, what, what did the preacher preach? You don't know. You got excited. The songs were nice, but you don't remember the title. Right. <laughs> Because the battle is about getting faith from you. Now look at it. Psalm 78, 12. Psalm 78, 12. But Osi, can you please read? Um, I'm sorry, 7822. Um, you have which version? Oh, you can God's word. Can you do God's word, please? They began to read of God's holy word. Because they did not. Now can you read 21? When the Lord heard this, he became furious. His fire burned against Jacob, uh -huh. and his anger fled up at Israel, because they did not believe God or trust him to save them. How many of you got that God is mad at when you go into your situation, you go to other people and say, Oh, yes, that's right. Oh. Yeah. He's saying, when you call your girlfriend, right. right, or you call somebody to give you money first, right. and that's why you have to beg. You know why you have to beg when you're in money trouble? Because God, would, when you go to God, and you pray to God and say, God, I need so-and-so money. Uh -huh. God will tell you who to call instead of you calling around until you feel rejected by everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, look. Okay. Right. Right. You calling everybody and their mama and they all telling you no. no. Now you feel depressed, you feel out because you calling everybody about I don't got no money. Well, God, if you go to God first and say, God, I need some money for that mortgage. I need some money for that thing. Lord, I'm believing you to pay for it and I'm, I, I'm coming to you first. And then after that, you wait for instruction to what God is going to tell you what to do. Yeah. Nobody hit me. Nobody hit me. Nobody hit me. When, 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 when I first started this church, right? And that I needed some money. God had none. And, and the building, to get into the building was almost $6,000. And I said, oh Lord. Then the Lord gave me the scripture. Ask and you should receive. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And I said, oh Lord, I don't like asking nobody. First of all, if you're going to be obedient to God, you got to take away pride. Bye. 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 Oh, Some of you are going to be, when God gives you instruction, you're too prideful to follow. Yeah. Amen. You're too prideful yeah. to follow. So the Lord told me, call so and so. I said, call him. Woo. I said, praise the Lord. I, I said, okay, God. So now God had to deal with me with pride. Because I don't like asking people. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm begging. Yeah. 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 But guess what? If I wanted to do God's will and I wanted to start this building and make his assignment, mm -hmm. he has somebody who got the money for me already. Yes. Yes. Nobody hear me. Yes. Somebody got the money for me already. When God gives you an assignment, the money is already there. Amen. You, when you say yes to God, he makes you, he, he, he'll tell somebody, see some, that's, oh yes Lord, I hear you. There's some people holding money for you, but you're too prideful to do what God says. Okay, see, nobody believes it. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. I think God gives you exactly. You're too prideful to go and say, Thus said the Lord, give me that money, it's mine. <laughs> see, you're too scared. Praise God. Too scared. God got your stuff. Nobody hear me. Now see, oh Lord, I'm trying to get big up in here. Oh Lord, I, I'm not going to be here preaching to make you jump. God got your money. Can I tell you something why? See, this is why I'm dealing with faith already. Can I tell you something? When God made Adam, Adam, see, he didn't need faith to receive. Because why do you need faith to receive something that God already did for you? He didn't need faith. He just received what God did for him. First of all, when God made Adam, right, he already provided everything he needed for, for him to live, for him to have. He prepared the garden. See, God did make Adam first and have him wait around so he can make the trees and the, and the monkeys and the fruits and the things that he needed. See, God made all those things already. And then he put him in the garden and he said, you till it, you work it. You work what I'll be getting. Adam didn't have to beg for nothing. He didn't have to ask for nothing. He didn't have to do nothing. Now, guess what happened? All Adam had to do is to enjoy what God had done. Now, what God had done is this, right? That the devil got the things here in this world, the physical realm. But what God did, he put everything you needed in seed form. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's good. He shrank it in seed form. Nobody hear me. Oh, oh God. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. He put everything in seed form. That's why he said the farmer soweth the word. So everything you need, you got the speaker like it, like he did to already provide it. So you use faith at that point. So everything you need, you speak it, it's in the word. I put his seed in my mouth. It's like a bullet. Oh, everything I need will come to existence. Everything I come on now. I begin to create the very thing. That, come on. Your house is already in existence. It's not going to be in existence. It already is in existence. You got to find out where God has come on now. You see, you got to believe that God will give you a house without no mortgage that we don't owe nobody nothing but to love them. God is able to do it. Nobody hear me. Nobody, no, you see, you see, nobody, see, see, nobody is looking at me. You've got to get your faith. You see, the thing is, you've got to dare to believe God in that level. See, some of you are scared. Some of you are chicken because you believe when God tells you something, guess what? I don't got the money. My credit score is 540. See, guess what happened? Unbelief jump in and stop you and see the thief come to steal, 
kill, and to destroy. The minute the word comes, he snatches it, and yes. that's what happens. What's left yeah. is unbelief, yeah. because unbelief yeah. is trying to figure something out, yeah. how he going to do it, but he didn't ask you to do nothing but to believe him. Nobody hear him. He didn't ask you to do nothing but to believe God, to be able to say, God, you're able. God, come on, I, I, I'm not teaching above y'all. I feel like some of y'all teaching above y'all. My God, trying to get your faith on this level. Because some of y'all broke, you need God to move for you. Some of us need some, come on, some of us need come on, new houses. Some of us need business money. Some of us need breakthrough. Some of us need some healing. Some of us need some deliverance. Some of us need some stuff from God. But God, God, I don't got no money. All I got is the word. But God said that's all you need is the word of God. Nothing shall be impossible to those who believe God. Now, 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 that's why, that's why the devil want to keep your faith on low level. He wants to keep you in low level faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what low level faith is? You asking God things you can do. God, you asking God things you can do. But God said, ask me a hard thing. Ask me something I've got no money to get. Don't get the credit to get. Don't get nothing to get. Ask me what a hard thing. Come on, ask me something that's going to make you scared. Ask me something that's going to make you shake. Ask me something that's going to make you nervous. Ask me something. That's why God, my God, the Spirit of the Lord went into my God, what's her name? Uh, uh, Sarah. He said, by this time next year, you're going to have a child. But I'm 99 years old. But you don't understand, Sarah. I am God. I am the Elohim. I'm too old now, baby. I give you a new womb. I give you everything you need. I don't care what the doctor say. Is there anything too hard for the Lord God? Nobody hear me. Nobody hear me. Is there anything too hard for God? There's nothing God cannot do. What's cancer before God? It's a name that got to bow down in worship. What's poverty? It got to bow down in worship. What sickness? It got to bow down in worship. There is a name given above every other name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Everything shall confess that he is Lord. For the judge and say, I ain't gonna let go till you do something about my situation. I ain't gonna let go till you bless me. Come on, come on now. There's something that God has given me in this world that's gonna break and give me a breakthrough. I don't have to be poor, I don't have to be broke, I don't have to be in depression. God already did something for this depression and sickness and everything I'm going through. That's when you spend time with the Word. You see, the thing about it, the church no longer believe. Yeah. Oh, God have mercy. Yeah. The church no longer got faith, crazy faith, crazy. to say, I don't care. My Redeemer lives, and I'm going to believe him. See, David had crazy faith. Before he saw the resurrection, he believed in the resurrection. That's the sure blessings of David. Yeah. David said, even though I didn't see Jesus yet, even though I had not seen him, but I know my, my Redeemer lives, and I shall not see the king. Yeah. I didn't see him, but I believe him. I didn't touch them, but I believe them. Somebody to come to God and say, I believe. I believe. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Can yeah. I come here to break that spirit of unbelief today? Uh -huh. Oh, God, have mercy. 2 Kings 17. 2 Kings 17. 
Come on now. Glory. Hallelujah. 2 Kings 17. Verse 14. To 15. Read it in the message for me. You can all see. But they refused to listen. But they refused to listen. They became impossible to do. Okay, are you reading from the message? I'm sorry, Pastor. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, go ahead, read. 22, right? 14 to 15. 14 to 15. But they wouldn't listen. Uh -huh. If anything, they weren't even more bullheaded than other stubborn ancestors. You see that? Hold up. He said they wouldn't listen. They were hard-headed than their ancestors. Right. They wouldn't believe like their ancestors. Go ahead. If that's possible. They were contemptuous of his instruction. See, they would listen to what God is saying. What you're listening right now is instruction. Yes. yes. Okay, go ahead. The solemn and holy covenant he had made with their ancestors. The word, go ahead. And of his repeated reminders and warnings. Uh-huh. They lived a, a nothing life and became nothing. You see that? They live a nothing life. What is a nothing life? When you don't hear God's instruction, that's a nothing life and you become nothing. Ooh. When you don't use God's word and, 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 and you ignore his word. And that's why the devil have men thinking that they know more about God. Can I tell you something? How is a man who's created going trying to figure out who's the creator is unless he reveals himself? How are you going to describe God? How are you going to listen to? How are you going to listen to some scientist who God created? And he going to tell you God don't exist. Guess what? The God of this world uh -huh. have blinded their minds. Yes. Because the truth is, you don't see with your eyes. Right. You see with your mind. Right. Oh, glory. That's good. That's good. Oh, glory. That's right. You see with your mind, not with your eyes. You see me right now. It's not with your physical eye. You see yes. me with your mind. Glory. But if I blind your eyes, you can see the gospel that should save you. That's right. Yes. Yes. I blind yourself to the truth. I blind your mind to the truth of God's word. That's why the devil don't mind you coming to church, but he don't want you to be in the word church. He don't want you to be in the church that speak the word, that talk the word, and say live the word, because guess what? Lest you be saved. Now, now look at it. The, but Jesus did not come to save your spirit and leave you broke or sick. Or depressed, or oppressed. That's what religion says. But he didn't. Because you only believe. See, we as pastors got to preach the full gospel. That's right. Full gospel. The full gospel. Yeah, yeah. He came to save you mind, <coughs> body, and spirit. Soul, he came to save your soul, which consists of your emotions yeah. and your spirit. All of you. He didn't come to save half of you. Amen. But all of you. Amen. Every single part of you. That means when, when you don't got to take no pill for depression. Amen. But I got to take the word for depression and drive it out. Schizophrenia, all kind of mental illness. I don't need to take no pill. I got to take the word because there's some demon who up there trying to mess up my head. But guess what? If I take the word, they break me loose. Oh, yes. Yes. oh God, have mercy. There's power in the word of God. There's dunamis in the power of my God, in the word of God. That's why they don't mind doing some religious thing where, where we give the word a small amount of time, but we give personality so much more. But we give the word this amount of time. Hurry up and preach it. But you can sing for two hours. You can dance for three, four hours. You can do this. We give the prophetic so much time. But the word is prophetic. It is
just like the pagan peoples all around them. They were well worn. God said don't, but they did it. God said what? Don't. They became just like everybody else around them. Because they didn't put up the word where the word can, can separate them from everybody else. So because we, be, we were disobedient, they became nothing. Okay, Nehemiah 9.16. Nehemiah 9.16. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Message. Yeah, yes. Let me see. 9.16. Let me see here. Come on. I was in plain to sweat. But go ahead. Are you at war, man? Let's go. Okay. Okay. 16. Go ahead. I'll do God's word first. But they, our own ancestors, acted arrogantly. Uh -huh. They became stubborn, hard-headed, and wouldn't obey your commands. They wouldn't obey the word. Yeah. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't obey the word. No, keep reading. Go ahead. They, they refused to listen. They refused to listen. They forgot the miracles you performed for them. Uh -huh. They became stubborn and appointed their leader to take them back to slavery in Egypt. Ooh. But you are a forgiving God. Look at it. They didn't want to listen to, to see... They didn't want to listen to the word. They appointed a leader to bring them back to slavery. Yes. When, when, when you don't listen to the word, right, you're going back to slavery. You're going to find a leader who's going to take you back to slavery. And there's enough leaders out here who will. In church and outside of church. Say it. Bring it. Because what they're going to tell you, go for the stuff. No. What I'm talking about, you got to be holy. Yeah. Amen. 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 What I'm talking here is for holy people. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you got to want to do right. Because you know why? You don't want anything to contaminate your faith. Amen. Amen. See, the, you, you have to understand the trick of the enemy. The enemy, have you seen this commercial, right? The insurance commercial. I know. Geico. Yeah. Okay. The devil will put that little thing, dollar, hurry up and get it. Yeah. 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 quick enough. Yeah. 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 He'll dangle some promises ahead of you. But because he knows that the minute you try to reach for it, he yeah. said your life don't match what you believe in for. Right. 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 Nobody hear me. Wow. Your life don't match what you believe in for. And he knows that. He knows that. Because guess what? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. But those who come to him must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that did yeah. seek him. Yeah. Psalm 95. Come on now. Psalm 95. Um, verse 8 to 11. Don't be stubborn like my people were at Merrillville. Don't be stubborn like them. Like at the time at Masa in the desert, uh -huh. your ancestors challenged me and tested me there. Uh -huh. Although they had seen what I had done. Yes, sir. Forty years I, dis I, I was disgusted with those people. Uh -huh. So I said, "Those oh, they are people whose heart continued to stray. Uh -huh. They are not learned in my ways. See, they're not learned in my ways. God trying to teach them his ways so they can survive, so they can have, but they keep trying to be stubborn. Can I tell you something? They had too much Egypt in them than God's word. They had too much the world in them. And that's the problem. The job of the pastor is to take the world out of you. And put the kingdom in you. He, his job, right, is to take away how you used to do things in the world and believe the word. In the world, you know how to do a hustle to get the money. Yeah. Nobody gave me. Oh yeah, man. But the hustle you make usually it's about hurting somebody else to get what you want. But in the kingdom, we don't hustle because the word gives us what we desire. So I've got to learn how to use the word to get my desire than me knowing what I used to get in the world to hustle people, to step on people, to keep people at the benefit. Come on now. You see, okay, let me tell you. Why do you think the drug dealer don't want to give up the corner because he don't know the ways of the Lord, the world, the, the Lord because if he had to give the ways of the Lord, he's going to be broke. So now, 
His system is to get somebody else drunk. I don't care if you hook and I don't care who died. I don't care who messed up. That's not the way God does things. Amen. 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 The world you want money, prostitute yourself. Sell this. Do that. Do this. So the job of the pastor is to come and purify you from the ways of the world and to go into the system of God to learn the word and get what you need. Amen. 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 And that Amen. takes time. Enjoy yourself, sweetheart. Have a good time. Amen. Now, Psalm 95, right? Yeah. We did that. Isaiah 65, too. I stretched out my hands all day long to stubborn people. You see that, right? What did you say? I stretched out my hands all day long to stubborn people. They choose to go the wrong direction. They choose to go the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. They follow their own plans. They follow their own plans. God's word trying to give you a plan to get you how to not eat, mm -hmm. drink, and have everything you need for life. But we choose to follow our own plan because we don't trust God's plan. We don't trust his word. We don't trust because guess what? We want everything quickly. That's right. We want everything now. But God, when we trust God, right? You begin to see his plan. You begin to see his purpose. And guess what? It may take a little time, but it's more enjoyable. And guess what? It's more durable. And that's why you find out, right? When you go try to do things on your own, you can get it, right? But it doesn't mean God give it to you. Can I tell you something? The blessing of the Lord make it rich, but add it no sour. When you try to go on your own, you get it quick, but there's a lot of sour involved in it. And how many people understand? I've done that on my own, but I don't want to do that no more because I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of getting hurt. I'm tired of being disappointed. I'm tired of being discouraged. I'm tired of being depressed. I give my heart to this person. I give my soul, but there's nothing at the end of it. I give. You have to understand, that's why the enemy, right? I was talking this morning about the man of the, that, 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 that was in the cemetery at the gatherings. That the devil wants you to be in that place, a still place, where death is. That man got caught up in the cemetery, crying all day long, tormented. Tormented probably about how his life could have been, should have been. The demons keep coming in, controlling the whole town. There was disobedience somewhere along the line. And that's where the devil wants us to live in a cemetery where nothing is living. Nothing is existing but dead things. But the word of God is life. He said, behold, I come to give you life. And life what? More abundantly. And guess what the Bible says? How can we neglect so great a salvation? You have to understand, right? Right in there as a pastor, I got to, I learned. I'm not going to use my gift to fill up the church. They won't, they won't stay too long. No, that's right. no. They won't. But I choose to use the word of God because he said this, right? If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I trust his word. Sometimes, and that I have to trust God, right? Because what I'm seeing don't match what I'm... Fight, fight, fight. Amen. Come on now. Jesus. Sometimes I feel like the type of preaching in me is for thousands. Yeah. Oh, yes. But I'm preaching to hundreds. Fight. So I have to learn to trust God That's and right. say, God, I ain't going to do it my way. I ain't trying. This thing that we live in is not about making a name. Right. It's not about being famous. It's about changing lives. Amen. It's about changing lives. It's about changing the life of the people that comes around you. God gave me an opportunity for maybe another 30 minutes to change your heart towards Him and bless you. Like Deacon Osu was telling me, Mr. Osu was telling me, every time the word comes, it's to bless you. It's to bless you. Don't run on it. Don't sleep on it. Don't get tired on it. That's the only thing you got to change your life. Don't neglect it. 
You can miss anything. Can I tell you something? You can miss anything, but I'm telling you, you can't miss a feeling. Amen. Anytime you miss a feeling, you probably miss an opportunity for your life to be changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the way you got to look at it. Every time I miss an opportunity, because you got to understand, the word of God is God speaking to you right now. It's not a man, but it's God speaking to you right now. Can I tell you something? And if you write a letter, you write it to your family, and one of your daughters read it, guess who's speaking to them? Me. You. So this is God's letter to you. Amen. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? If Jesus was right here t talking to you himself, would you sleep? Some of us. <laughs> would you get tired? Wouldn't you be like this if Jesus, seriously, if Jesus was here talking to you, wouldn't you be like, oh man, right. I can't slack it, just that. Right. Oh, oh my God. Say what you say again, Jesus. <laughs> You're going to be up. You're going to be up. Well, this is Jesus talking to you. Amen. Amen. This is his word talking Amen. to you. That's right, man. This is his voice. That's right. That's why right. he said, those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. That's it. Come on. The church no longer understands. There's no honor in the word. And because there's no honor in the word, there's no honor in church. There's no integrity in church. There's no nothing. The Bible says, how can a man, young man, keep himself pure by hiding his word in his heart? Amen. Yes. You gotta hide that word. And glad a young man and old man, everybody right. being tempted now. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Every woman being tempted. Not about only a young man being tempted. I'll give you sex to you be tempted. That's right. <laughs> it's not the young man that gotta hide, hide the word. An old man, old woman, young woman. Everybody got to hide that word in the heart because the devil is after everyone. Nice. Nobody did it. Got to fight. And that's why most of the problems you got, right, when you're moving into sin, you know what the first thing that the enemy does when you go into sin? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that, that the minute you start missing some feedings, your flesh begins to lead slowly. Yeah. Yeah. The things you could say no to, you won't. The Bible said, put no trust in the flesh. Oh, nobody hit me. You trust your flesh, go on. I don't care how I save you. I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you minister. I don't care if you evangelist. If you move from this word of God. And I don't care how, how well you shout in church. Okay. And I don't care how well you pray. And I don't care how well you dance. The minute you starve yourself from this word of God, you begin to revert to what you used to be. Say that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes. That's true. That's true. That's real. We leave you out there for two months without it. You start cursing back. Real quick. Okay. Even when you say it, you start, you think about it, but you don't say it. Nobody all right. That's true. That's true. That's true. You think it, but you don't have control. Oh, no, I have to go. Hallelujah. Leave you out there for two months with no word. And you'll be a sailor, a drunk sailor. <laughs> Cursing everybody. So what happened? You all right? <laughs> Sipping in a book. <laughs> that is why the first way the enemy going to get you is to take you away from the word. Okay. The Bible says when the word comes, the enemy comes. Yes, right. Yes, right. Anything you don't understand, he takes. Yes, right. Anything you don't understand, he takes away from you. He makes you forget it by the time you come out there if you don't understand it. And guess what? His job is this, to steal. No, he, he don't kill before he steals. 
He steals first. Because if you don't steal the word, he can kill you or destroy you. And that's why he's after the word. That's why uh, in the church, he, he makes sure there's emotionalism, there's all kinds of things, but he don't want people to sit down to hear and listen. It's not only good to hear, but you got to listen. And that is why most churches, we try to make programs to entertain people. That's right. Not in Zion. Right. I'd rather lose people than to entertain people. God did not save me and call me and put me in assignment to entertain. God had put me in assignment for you to be delivered, for you to be saved, for you to be free from... If I got to preach, preach to 10 people, you shall be saved, you shall be healed, you shall be delivered, you won't be broke, you won't be poor, you'll be whole inside and out. Amen. Don't care about the numbers. Do we want more people? Of course we do. We don't want them. But being having a bunch of crowd don't mean you're doing anything. What kind of quality people are we producing in the kingdom? Right. Well, nobody here. Nobody here. It's okay. All right. Did we finish, right? Psalm, um, Isaiah 65, we did that? Yes. Okay, we read that. Jeremiah 726. Jeremiah 726. But you didn't obey me or pay attention to me. You became impossible to deal with, and you were worse than your ancestors. Go ahead, 27. Jeremiah, you will say all these things to them, but they will not obey you. You will call to them, but they will not respond. You going to preach it up, they won't listen. Wow. <laughs> they ain't going to be, that God, he said you're going to preach, they won't listen, they won't obey you. Go ahead, go ahead, verse 28. You will say to them, this is the nation that did not obey the Lord their God. They did not accept the discipline. See, the word is discipline. They didn't accept discipline. Go ahead. Truth has disappeared and vanished from their lips. Read. Cut off your hand and throw it away. Sing a song of mourning on their bare hills, because in his anger the Lord has rejected and abandoned the people of this generation. Go ahead. The people of Judah have done what I considered evil, declares the Lord. They set up detestable idols in the house that is called by my name. They have made it unclean. They have built worship sites at Topher, in the valley of Ben Hinnom, in order to burn his sons and daughters as sacrifices. I did not ask for this. It never entered my mind. This is what the days are coming, declares the Lord, when that place no longer be known as Tofa or the valley of Ben Hinnom, instead it will be known as Slaughter Valley. There will bury people at Tofa because no place will be left. Stop right there. You see what happened when the word goes. Wow. They go crazy. They go mad. Everybody go mad. Everybody go crazy. When there's no word, they start burning their own kids. There are so many things that's happening in the world right now. People are going mentally crazy. People are going mad because of the absence of the word of God. Men without the word of God is nothing less than an animal. That's right. Right. Without God instruction, without God direction, we become more like animals every day. And now people are doing whatever they want to do. That's right. They're acting in any way, their own morality, their own sense of justice, instead of God's justice. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 3, 12 to 19. We're getting there. Tell somebody we're getting there. Yeah. Be careful, brothers and sisters, that none of you even develop a wicked, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Encourage each other every day while you have the opportunity. If you do this, none of you be, be deceived by sin and become stubborn. After all... I'm sorry, which one? Three, right? Twelve. Three, okay. twelve, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, got it. Are you against it? Yes. Be careful, brothers and sisters, that none of you ever develop a wicked, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living You see that, right? Yes. Be careful, brothers and sisters, right, that none of you ever develop a wicked, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now, none of you here will say, I, I will turn away from God. None of you will right. ever think that. Right. But I want to tell you this. 
when you turn away from the from the word, yeah. you're turning away from God. Yeah. Yeah. When you turn away from his instruction and how he tells you to live yeah. and what he wants you to do, Isaiah, you yeah. turn it away from God. Yes. If he tells you to behave in something, you just turn. Yeah. You just turn. But the thing is, we want to make it seem like something else, but you just turn. I turn. Ignorantly, I have turned. Because I didn't know that. I didn't, I wasn't taught that. We were a bunch of kids in school, like in church, disobedient to God. God trying to teach us how to live. Now I'm gonna live my own life. I'm gonna know, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I'm gonna uh, uh, act any way I want. But you just turn away from God. But the same way you turn, you come on Sunday, lift up your hands. Oh my God. Not, not, not saying it to blame you because I've done it. Disobedient. But you're preaching, you're teaching because you're ignorant mm -hmm. to the truth of God's word. And the enemy wants you to live that way. He wants you to live in a way, your own way. In your own heart, you live in your own way and not God's way. Yeah. And that's unbelief. And you're training yourself not to believe him. Can I tell you something? If you don't listen to him and live in holy, you won't listen to him blessing you. Mm -hmm. See, there's a problem. If I tell you God is going to bless you, you say, yes, God. I believe it. Yes. Yes, Jesus. But I train myself all these other time not to believe him because I don't believe him in that area. I don't believe in, 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 in loving my neighbors, not gossiping, not having hit in my heart, not being a certain ways, and, and being disobedient in so many areas. But when it comes to the blessing, I want it. But guess what? That makes us. Guess, guess what's that, that make us when, when we come in and the church only want what he got, but they don't want his heart. So now you turn away so far from God already. If I keep on turning, I may start it this way, but if I keep on turning, I keep going farther and further away from God. Because now, if you want God's blessing, I'm being honest with you, right? You gotta check your heart and say, God, where is it that I have been disobedient? Can I tell you something? Nehemiah was disobedient. They were marrying people who had different beliefs right. and different things. And Nehemiah, the prophet, came, the priest, began to say, separate yourself from these people, from the children and everything, and get right before God. And you cannot come and say, I have faith in God, and I believe in God for what he does, unless you become obedient to what he already told you. you got to turn away from your sins. Because then, if I tell you, right, oh, God going to give it to you. Yes, he's a loving God. Yes, he's a caring God. But there's some things in your house you got to get straight yes. for unbelief to go. Yes. For unbelief to go. See, there's something in you that's causing the unbelief to get the other things because there's other things God told you you didn't do. You didn't listen to instruction. Yes. And we need to repent to God and begin to tell God, please forgive me of my unbelief. Yes. Forgive me. See, you call it disobedience. And you say you're repenting, but it's what he told you how to live in his word. Oh, God, that, that you need to say, God, forgive me. Yes. You, you cannot, oh, God, you, you, you cannot believe God to bless you, right? And that one area in your life, you've been disobedient all along. Because in your heart, right, you really don't believe he going to do it because you know what you're doing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's you know. Yes. Nobody needs to tell you. You know. That's right. Oh. Yes. Remember that parable, see? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so when the preacher says, God will bless you, right? God's going to bless you and God's going to do this. That unbelieving part in your heart, jump up. Say, you don't believe. Right. Because if you believe, you would have done that. You would have got because God told you to do this and do that, and you didn't do it. That that sin issue in your life, you never dealt with it. You never fixed it. 
But, but, but I believe you, God. No, you don't. Because if you believe me, you can't go to C without taking care of A. Uh -huh. But we don't want to hear that. We don't that. Okay. See, you want his blessing, but you want what you want to do at the same time. Right. Doesn't work. See, that's why since then, it's hard when you want to come into the kingdom to be able to do what God wants you. You gotta deal with it. Yeah. You gotta deal with it. I'm, I'm preaching to me, as well to you, as well to all of us, that if we want for God, because there cannot be a seed, the wheat, the tears of disobedience that the devil had put inside of you. And you know what God wants you to do. But do you love that thing more than what you're expecting God to do for you? That's it. That's it right there. I'm not going to come here and tell you turn around eight times and you're going to get it. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm, I'm giving you the God, God's word. Amen. Because that's what we tell them. You did not want the discipline of the Lord. There's some things he gave you that's apart from you. Unconditional love. But there's some things that you want to go further. You got to make a choice about it. Did we finish? Yes, sir. We did 12 to 19. Do 15. 15. The scripture says, if you hear God speak today. If you hear God speak today. Do not be stubborn. Do not be stubborn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be stubborn like those who rebelled. Don't be stubborn like those who rebelled. Who what? Who heard God. Who heard God. How many times we heard God? I've done it. I've done it. You almost say, I'm going to say, I heard and I was rebellious. Yes. 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 I heard because I'm, I'm going to preach to myself. You don't want to act like you, you know what. Now I'm preaching to me. Now, I, I heard and I rebelled. Yes. This is not McDonald's. You can't have it your way. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. Right? Go ahead. All those whom Moses led out of Egypt rebelled. All those whom Moses led out of Egypt, they rebelled. Six million people. Six million rebellious people in the church. My God. Go on. With whom was God angry for 40 years? God was mad at them for 40 years. 40 years, God upset because they wouldn't listen. Go ahead. He was angry with those who sinned and died in the desert. Now, Nobody was committing adultery. Maybe they were, but it was not about that. He, he called sin the sin of disobedience. Yeah. Because the point is, the reason you do what you do is because you're disobedient. Yeah. Yeah. If God tells you to love, you don't love, that's disobedience. Right. Right. If God tells you you don't have sex before marriage and you do it, guess what that is? That's, that's disobedience. disobedience. So you call it, oh, it's a sin of this. No, it's a sin of disobedience yeah. and, it, and, it, and it, it's a point where you don't believe God right. what do you mean you don't believe there's a consequences to your actions God, okay in the book of Acts chapter 5 Ananias dropped dead real quick everybody got it right <laughs> <laughs> if adulterous people and, 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 and people who come in fornication begin to drop guess how many people will stop that's right. That's right. Oh, all of a sudden we got discipline oh no all of us will get discipline all of us will, will start getting wrong oh no, no praise the lord I'm holy <laughs> If all liars' tongue begin to fall off, right. oh. and gossipers' tongue begin to fall off, all hateful people, you know, how you really feel about people, and when you come around them trying to say, how are you doing? Then the Lord begins to play them how you really feel in your head while they're here. <gasps> you get it right real quick. You stop. If, now, just because you don't see a consequence, Right. Doesn't mean there isn't That's one. Right. That's right. That's right. That's real. 
Oh, oh boy. Let's talk to some real people. I, I, I want to talk to some real folks. I want to talk to some people over 40s. Talk, talk, talk. Or maybe over 20 these days, because the point is we will tell you, oh baby, don't do oh. It's good what we're doing it. But the pain. The hurt. The torment. I would rather a truck on a mouth foot. Nobody, okay, nobody. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That pain will have you call on Jesus. Jesus, please. Yes, sir. Have mercy upon me. You like black on my table. Have mercy. This is what I'm doing. I'll change, Lord. You get real religious. Come on. That pain will get you. You come to church wearing all white. You wear your Bible like this. You get all holy. So nobody hear me. Man, you nobody hear me. Man, that pain gets you straight. You that Jesus, you ever get me out? Ever? I tell you, I'm a real son of how many of y'all wish you would have listened? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And can I tell you something? Disobedience is like childbirth. Somebody say talking preacher. Okay, okay, all right. While, while, while you giving birth, you say, I don't want a baby. I don't want no more baby. Until. Two months later, and you get pregnant again. Or three months later, you forget pregnant. Because you forget the pain. And that's the problem with the church. You forgot the pain that caused you to make the same mistakes over. But tell somebody, say, Lord, help me remember. Oh, Lord. I remember I yeah, yes, run, run the other way. When they come in, you oh, run another. Get away from me. Oh, run. Oh, you be like Forrest. Oh, <laughs> run for it. You're running. You don't you know, be like the flag, Barry Allen. I'm not here. <laughs> I'm in Brooklyn. That's my after image. That's my remnant. I'm out of here. Now, now look at this. Right? Go ahead, 19. Oh, oh. Okay, you want me to help you here? I'm sorry. Okay. So we, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Pastor. So we, so we see. Okay that they could enter his place of rest because they didn't believe. I had a, I, I had a crazy dream last night, right? I was somewhere, right? I was somewhere and I think it was Don Saxby from True Worship Church, right? From, from True Worship Church and I was talking to him and he came and then he laid hands on my stomach and he said to me, rest now. Wow. He said, you have to rest, rest. Wow. He laid hands on me. And, and while I'm sleeping, the spirit fell on me. Wow. When I'm sleeping, I'm like, oh, little sheep, get out of here. I got up, oh, glory. And his church, and she, and his church in the sleep got up. The Holy Ghost on me. Have you ever got up with the Holy Ghost hit you in your sleep? You, you sleeping and hit you. Oh, God is in here. Glory. Everybody sleeping. <laughs> Everybody in the house sleeping but you. The Holy Ghost has hit you. Lord have mercy. And I felt the Holy Ghost. And God said, rest now. He said, rest now. Woo! Oh, glory. And God is telling somebody, rest in. Oh, God. Rest now. Woo! Don't worry. Rest now. Woo! When you believe, you enter into rest. When I trust Him, I enter into rest. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. When I trust God, I go into rest now. I no longer worry. I no longer 
trying to figure it out. I'm entering into rest now. I'm resting in God. I'm resting in His goodness. I'm resting in His mercy. I'm resting in His, my God and His provision. I'm resting that He can take care of me. I'm resting that He loves me. I'm resting that He cares about me. I'm resting that He's enough. I'm resting that He's God. I'm resting that He's going to make a way for me. Even though I don't see it, I'm resting in Him. I won't be restless because I have faith. You see, restlessness is unbelief. Restlessness is saying I don't trust Him. Restlessness is saying I don't know if He's going to do it. But rest says, even though do I walk to the valley of shadow of death, because my God is with me. My rock is my spark. Come on. You've got to understand. God is calling. There is no rest without no word. Wow. If he said it, if God spoke it, I can rest. Yeah. If he said it, yes. if the devil trying to say you're going to die, then devil, I'm going to be with Jesus. Yeah. And I'm still going to rest. Yeah. But I won't quit either. Yeah. Come on now. I won't worry either. I ain't going to worry about how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to drink, what I'm going to wear, and what I'm going to have because his word is true. I believe in God. And most of y'all cannot receive because you're restless. But God is saying, enter into his Amen. To that rest, oh place. For God, I'm resting in him. God and mercy. That resting place is a place of receiving. We have to deal with our unbelief. We have to confess it and remove it. Mark chapter 9. I'm going to show you. Mark chapter 9. For glory. Hallelujah. How many people understand God can bless you without no credit, without no nothing? It's good to have a plan, but God can bless you with nothing. Come on now. God can bless you with nothing. Read Mark chapter 9, right? Uh, uh, verse 23. You all right, going see? Because I'll see you in there. Go ahead. <laughs> Jesus said, as far as possibility. Okay, first of all, son, let's go um, 17. Let's do 17. 17. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son. I brought you my son. He is possessed by a spirit that won't let him talk. Uh-huh. Whenever the spirit brings on a seizure, it throws him to the ground. Uh-huh. Then he foams at the mouth. Yes, sir. Grinds his teeth and becomes exhausted. Mm -hmm. I asked your disciples to force the spirit out, but they didn't have the power to do it. Uh-huh. Jesus said to them, you unbelieving generation. You unbelieving generation. Go How ahead. long must I be with you? How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Uh-huh. Bring him to me. Bring him to me. Go ahead. They brought the boy to him. Uh-huh. As soon as the spirit saw Jesus, it threw the boy into convulsion. And a seizure. Go he ahead. He fell on the ground, rolled around, and foamed at the mouth. Uh-huh. Jesus asked his father, how long has he been like this? How long have you been broke? How long have you been depressed? Nice. Well, come on now. Mm -hmm. How long have you been without? How long you been like this? Go ahead. The father replied, he has been this way since he was a child. Yes. The demon had often thrown him into the fire or into water to destroy him. Uh -huh. If it's possible for you, put yourself in our place and help us. Yes. Jesus said to him, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person Hold who on. believes. Amen. Everything Amen. is possible. Hold on. That's that's in red. Yeah. That's Jesus talking. Okay. Everything is possible for what? Those who believe. So me getting a house debt free is possible. It's possible. Yes. Yes. Me getting me, me getting a business ended to me. Me getting some money that I didn't work for. It's possible for those who what? Anything. Okay. It's possible. Okay, okay. You got to take the limit off. Okay. You, you are the one who put the limit to what's possible or not. Jesus can do, see he said you can do anything 
You can have anything if you believe it. Yes. Anything is possible to those who believe. believe. So the problem is you, you only believe for, for an apartment. Right. But you're not believing for a mansion. Mm. Because if you're living for a mansion, you say, I'm going to pay it. I've got no money. So the devil trying to get you an unbelief. Because he's trying to make you to be the source instead of God's word being the source. Oh boy. Okay. 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 You, you can't believe you can't be debt free. Is it possible? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Read on. The child father cried out at once, I believe. Help my lack of faith. And that's where we are. In one scripture, it says, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. That part of me who don't believe your word. That part of me who don't trust your word when you say it, God. Help me. Take it out of me, God. Take that part out of me. When the preacher say something, I say, in my heart, mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Now, you never said it with your mouth. But you said it with your heart. And this is why I've got to <coughs> preach these type of messages to drive out unbelief out of your heart. Yes. To make you come to a realm of possibilities. Because the enemy trying to do everything to keep you in Lodabar. Yes. He wants to, see, unbelief in one point, the disciple came back and said, how come we couldn't cast it out? He said, this part will come out only by praying and fasting. Okay. Now, we're going to look at the course of unbelief. Second Kings 7. I'm almost done. Keep playing, so that's good right there. Right. Se Second Kings 7. <coughs> One to two. Right? Elisha answered, listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow. About this time tomorrow. Cups of the best flour will sell for half. Twenty-four ounce. cups of the best flour. Half an ounce of silver in the get gateway to Samaria. Uh huh. And forty-eight cups of barley will sell for half an ounce of silver. Yes, sir. The servant on whose arm the king was leaning. Now, now look at it. There was a famine. Right. There was a famine in the land. Yeah. Right. There was a big famine. One of the big famine. Yeah. The prophet said tomorrow. They gonna be food. They gonna be stuff. They gonna be lots of food. There's gonna be a whole bunch of things given. Now look at, at the heart of unbelief. Go ahead, read. Whose arm the king was leaning answered the man of God. Now read it from the servant. The servant on whose arm the king was leaning answered the man of God. So this happened even if the Lord poured rain through windows in the sky. Elisha replied, You will see it with your own eyes. But you won't eat any of it. See that, right? Oh. And that's our attitude. If God put water, Paul, rain ain't going to happen. When the preacher preach a message, that should never be your attitude. When the preacher says that you're going to get free mortgage, you should be like, yes, Lord. Don't be like that guy. Don't be like that guy who said, you know what, God ain't going to do it. God, that's a heart of unbelief. Yeah. Because you have not understand the power of words. Because if I'm saying it, it's as if God is saying it, and you got to receive it. Because now my job is, I'm not scared to say it. Right? right? I'm going to say it. Right? Because God already told me somebody in here will give me a house debt free. I don't care how. I don't know when. And I don't, he didn't give me no time to, but I believe it. I dare to say it. And I can say he's going to do the same thing for you. Yeah. I ain't trying to figure out how he's going to do it. I just said it. God will do it. But he's going to do it for those who believe. He's going to do it for those who have the ability to believe. But if you're sitting here trying to say, let me see if I might um, go home and take my credit. Let me go home and check how much money I got in the bank. There's no difference between that and the guy who leaned on the side of the king yeah. who said that, that ain't going to happen. And guess what Elijah said? It's going to happen, but you won't see it. You're not going to see it. 
Because you don't believe it. Okay, okay. We all say a second king, 17 to 20. Go down to 17 to 20. Okay. The king appointed the servant on whose arm he used to lean to be in charge of the gate. But the people trampled him to death in the gateway. As the man of God had predicted when the king came to him, it happened exactly as the man of God said. It happened exactly as the man of God said. Now, can I tell you something? If I say something to you, it don't happen. I'm not a false prophet. You're a false believer. You don't believe. The man of God said it. It happened. Why is it? I speak something, it happened for somebody else, right. but the word was given right. to everybody, but it only happened. I spoke some people go, go get cars. Right. Yes. Your son, right? Yes. We don't, we, uh, um, I didn't have a driver's license. Uh -huh. My work, my um, permit was expired. Mm -hmm. His driver's license was expired. We walk into up there and we got a brand new 2016. Come on! See that? 2016. <laughs> Because why? He followed the instruction of the word. But everybody else was scared. Come on. Come on. And now somebody said, well, you know what, to speak it again. Can he tell me? <laughs> Too late. All of y'all should have moved when the word was said. You and your son moved and you got it. And some other people, last time I said it, you got yours. A um, brand new car. Hey man, you wanted a used one, but you got a new one. But guess what? I got a couple. <laughs> Mr. OC got a couple of cars because he moved on it. But guess what? Everybody else who heard it just sat there. You sat there trying to figure out how much money I got, if I had this, if I had that. He had a permit and he took out a brand new car. Because what? There's power in the Word of God. There's no power in pastor. That's it. That's but there's power because the God in me spoke it. Yes. And if you do it, it's going to happen when you do it. That's Nobody it. hear me. Yes. Praise God. Yes. So guess what happened? Most of you are going to have brand new cars. You're trying to figure it out. Yes. Did you have to put some money down? No. Come on. Yes. Because the word never said so. Yes. Say, go get it. Go get it. Everybody's scared. How are you going to see what God will do if you're scared of move? The four lepers, they're going to say, we ain't going to sit here lest we die. Let's move to the city. And they got rich. They got, they said everything. Come here, everybody. Come on, everybody get some. You, you, you want some? Right. Then four lepers become Oprah Winfrey. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> They're giving everything away. All you got to do is believe the word of God. Yes. Now look at this, right? What happened to the guy who didn't believe, son? <laughs> 40, 48 cups of barley will sell for half an ounce of silver, and 24 cups of the best flour will sell for half an ounce of silver. This. Oh, the, answer, the man of God, could this happen even if the Lord poured rain through windows in the sky? Elijah answered, you will see with your own eyes, but you won't eat any of it. So this is what happened to the king's servant. The people trampled him to death. In see the that, right? That's what happened to unbelief, people who don't believe. You get trampled to death on the day. Everybody saw it. Now, the same thing the man of God said, it happened. Right. He said, you, you ain't going to see it because you don't believe it. God wants to do great things in here. That's right. Yes. He wants your faith of the word of God to come higher than it ever been before. Yes. You can't get all, all caught up and say, well, you know what? Uh, we want to get excited. No, man, you want to get blessed. Yes. You want to see results for your life. You want to know the word of God. You want to have transformation in your life. Now, I'm going to show you what is the, this is the last one. What is the proper attitude, right, towards the word of God and how to receive it? This is the last one. How to properly receive from the Word of God. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. You could play now, is it? Verse 26 to 38. Loud voice, son. Six months after Elizabeth had become pregnant, 
God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee. The angel went to a virgin promised in marriage to a descendant of David named Joseph. The virgin name was Mary. Mm -hmm. When the angel entered her home, he greeted her and said, You are favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. She was startled by what the angel said and tried to figure out what this greeting meant. The angel told her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have, you have found favor with God. You will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and name him Jesus. He will be a great man and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. Uh -huh. Your son will be a king of Jacob's people forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mm -hmm. Mary asked the angel, how can this be? I've never had sexual intercourse. Okay, stop right. How can it be? I don't have a high school diploma. Right. I don't have a degree. Mm -hmm. I never went to no school. Yeah. How, yeah. How, how is it going to be? My credit report is 230. Is that the lowest? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 430. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how's it going to be, right? How's, how's it going to be? I don't know how to run a business. How's it going to be? I don't know how to do this. How's it going to be? I don't know how to do that. Yeah. How, how yeah. you going to tell me to start yeah. a business? I got no money, Lord. How's it going to be? But you told me to do it. How's it going to be? How's it going to be? And that's the problem we got. How's it going to be? We're trying to figure it out. Right? We're trying to figure what God said. But look at the proper attitude, right? What the angel said, son. The, an the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come to you. The Holy Spirit will come to you. Yeah. And the power of the Most High. And the power of El Shaddai. Yes. Will overshadow you. Me. The Most High God. Yeah. The one, the El El Yon. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody hear me. Yeah. The, the same God that did the most high is the same God that took Abraham out of the earth of Kadir yeah. and brought him out of witchcraft. He had nothing and made him very, very rich. That's the same God, the most high God. He said the power of the most high God, meaning whatever you need, God will create. Yes. Whatever you desire, God will create it. God will make it happen. Go ahead. Therefore, the holy child developing inside you will be called the son of God. Okay, if God can develop a kid inside somebody, can he not develop for you to have a home, to have some peace, to have some... Thank you, Lord. He, did he not develop a child inside of a woman? Yes. yes. Amen. So what us God cannot do? Jesus said nothing shall be impossible to them Thank to believe. Jesus. Now, the angel said, the Holy Ghost will come, right, and, and, and develop this child inside of you. What is her attitude? Elizabeth, your relative is six months pregnant with her son, with a son in her old age. People said she... Okay, hold on. No, no, no. She got her brain. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right, go ahead. People said she couldn't have a child. People said she couldn't have a child. People said you couldn't have a home. Love People that. said you couldn't be happy. Love People that. said you wouldn't ever have a breakthrough. People yeah. said you were broke. People said you yeah. never had. People yeah. said this about you. Yeah. People said that about you. Now look at Elizabeth. Whatever somebody has said about you, it doesn't matter. What matters is what heaven says about you. Yeah. What matters is what God says about you. What matters is what the word says about you. Yeah. Oh God, have mercy. Right. That's what matters. Go ahead. But nothing's impossible. They go again. But nothing is impossible for Elohim. Yeah. The God who takes nothing and makes something yes, out of it. Yeah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The God who takes nothing. No, oh, hold on. Stand up, son. You're not done yet. But nothing is impossible for God, for Elohim. Now, her response, when you hear the word, should be your response every yes. time. Right, right. Mary answered. Mary answered. I am the Lord's servant. I'm the Lord's servant. Are you the Lord's servant? Oh, look. Are you the Lord's servant? Yes. Say, I'm the Lord's servant. I'm the Lord's servant. Yes. Say it again. I'm the Lord's servant. I'm the Lord's servant. Hallelujah. Go ahead. 
Let everything you said. Hold up. Let everything you said. Let everything you said. Happen to me. Happen to me. Yes, That's God. Every time you hear, you yes, see, God. when I say you're going to have a, 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 a brand new car, guess what you say? Let, Let everything you say happen to me. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. I'm going to say it again. You're going to have a new car. Let everything you say.
in a place where you say God's word is not true. But we come against that spirit of unbelief. We're going to pray. Father, bring wisdom and revelation so that I can see the corruption in my thoughts and attitudes. Demolish this stronghold of unbelief with your mighty power so that your robe of righteousness fits mine as well. Let the call be brought to my lips so I can see with spiritual and natural eyes and say, woe is me from a man of uncleanness. With one touch from you, I will be healed and consecrated, set apart to display the love and light of Jesus. Let your light dispel the darkness that covers me. Give me the right and privilege to marvel at your created power. Remove the obstacle, Lord, that hinders me from being a ready channel from the transportation of your faith. As you destroy these fortresses in my mind and soul, let every root of bitterness, pride, rage, anger, anger and slander and be removed forever. Be removed Let, me be Let me be rooted and grounded, and grounded in, your love. in your love. A tree firmly, a tree firmly planted, by planted by the streams of your living water. Your living water. Refresh, my soul. Refresh my soul. In the name of the Lord Jesus, our Lord, Lord Jesus. We, pray. we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise God. Amen.